covered a decent amount of Bill Bruford over the years. Lots with Yes. He appeared on their first five records, debut album, the original Yes. The follow-up to that, Time and a Word. The Yes album really broke them big. Fragile, arguably their best known and most accessible 70s album. And out of that came the sidelong epic Close to the Edge. This would prove to be Bill's final album with the group. He really felt like he had kind of hit a ceiling with them and was ready for new challenges elsewhere. Lots with King Crimson. So in 1972, he left Yes and headed for the thornier musical waters offered by King Crimson. He would play with them for the next few years, and out of that would come three albums that are progressive rock classics as well. Lark's Tongues and Aspic, Starless and Bible Black, and Red. The 80s version, which did three albums, Discipline, Beat, and Three of a Perfect Pair. All essential progressive rock albums. UK. Bruford was part of the progressive rock supergroup UK, along with Alan Holsworth, Eddie Jobson, and John Wetton. It was a short-lived marriage, though, because Holsworth was expected to recreate his solos from the record verbatim, and there was no way he was going to do that. So he bolted, and Bill followed. Some live Genesis. Then he had a very short tenure in Genesis, right after Peter Gabriel had left and Phil Collins decided to become the front man. There were times when Phil couldn't play the drums and sing, so they brought in Bill. This also offered the opportunity for both drummers to play at the same time, and the dual drummer version of Genesis was born, which was always very captivating in a live setting. Some Earthworks. A bit of music with Ralph Towner that I really like. And of course, there's Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman. And Howard. But aside from my friend Eric playing me Hell's Bells and Beelzebub, I think this might be my first time with one of his solo albums. This isn't a strictly solo album, you know. It's just that the band is called Bruford. Kind of like how back in the day, Dad used to have an infusion band called Trucks. Yeah, with, um, with Jim Graves on guitar. Good player. Played with him once in Jacksonville. Right, so the band called Bruford also had Dave Stewart, Jeff Berlin, and Alan Holdsworth. The original lineup included American bassist Jeff Berlin, English guitar virtuoso Alan Holdsworth, and British vocalist Annette Peacock. And on keyboards, his closest collaborator in this new band, Dave Stewart, who you might remember from Hatfield in the North, and previously, Egg. Cool, Alan Holdsworth is on this album? Nope. Uh, He left just before this album was made. So who's on guitar then? The unknown John Clark. Who? Exactly. The lack of Alan Holdsworth. He had departed by this point and was replaced by one of his students. Huh. And if I'm not mistaken, this is our third time around with Dave Stewart on keyboards? With a couple more to come. Dude, at this rate I need to get a spreadsheet together to keep track of these musicians we keep running into. Or one of those pushpin and string type conspiracy murder board things? That might help. Anything else I should know about this album? It's co-produced by Ron Mallow. You mean the dude that did all the chess records and then went on to produce Heavy Weather? And three albums by The Stones. Sweet. I don't know that I would have predicted an album like this. The debut album feels good to me showed right away what a unique outfit this was. The second album, one of a kind, which just happens to be purely instrumental, is many people's very favorite. Gradually Going Tornado seems like a left turn in some ways. We've got a different palette going on for starters. Dave Stewart became a big user of the Prophet 5 keyboard, whereas on the earlier albums, it was mostly just a blend of Moog and Rhodes, and maybe some Yamaha stage piano. During this first spin, I'm hearing some things that remind me of post-cream Jack Bruce, like from Harmony Row or Things We Like. Some things that remind me of early Level 42, especially their debut album, the self-titled one. But mostly what I'm hearing reminds me of early 80s Alan Holdsworth, ironically enough. Maybe like IOU or some of the mellower tracks on Metal Fatigue. Although honestly... Not as musically interesting. At first glance, anyway. Not that there's nothing interesting going on. To be honest, I was kind of bracing myself to be disappointed with Gradually Going Tornado, based on what some of my friends had said to me leading up to this first spin. But there's some cool moments, some good ideas, 
and great playing. Okay, let's get into it though. Age of Information. The song starts off with, I'm sad to say, one of the least musical melodies I've ever encountered in a song's opening line. You and your kind. The rest of the song is fairly decent though, with the highlight for me being some gigantic jangly chords from Dave Stewart. Joe Frazier. Jeff Berlin's first composition with the Bruford Band. I mean, the head is fabulous, isn't it? Laid out in that nearly sonata ABAC song form, tight, tricky unison runs, then a decent, if short, solo from John Clark, great solo from Jeff Berlin, great little tune. Yeah, I don't think Joe Frazier would be out of place on, like, the UK album. Probably the highlight of the album for me so far. QED, mostly, this sounds like an experiment in harmony to me. Dave Stewart's keyboard improvisation does the same kind of slipping in and out of the mode that you hear Max Middleton do on the closing solo to Air Blower from Blow by Blow by Jeff Beck. But it was also in QED that I really started to miss Alan Holdsworth. It's not that the unknown John Clark can't play. If anything, it's that he sounds so much like Holdsworth, yet he's never really given room to stretch out. You can first hear him on the live album that came out before this called The Bruford Tapes. And there you can hear him recreating many of Holdsworth's solos from the first two records, all while playing a Les Paul with no whammy bar. Which is pretty impressive because Alan had some very agile bar work on both of those records. It just seems to me that... Bruford might have been better off going the return to forever route. I mean, when Bill Connors left, they didn't replace him with a Bill Connors clone. They got Al Demiola instead. And I think that having an original voice here might have helped. John Clark went on to play with Cliff Richard, of all people. Darling, the young ones. I would imagine his Holesworth licks have been in mothballs for decades. It was hard for me to find the harmonic center on the sliding floor. I don't know what it was, but I could never really nail down what the key was. The sung melody didn't help that much either. I mean, I could hear the bass riff in A that Jeff Berlin was playing, but nothing else on top of it seemed to be anchored all that tightly to it. The rhythm in the intro and in the bridge were cool, though. I didn't get an opportunity to count it accurately yet, but it seems to be one of those odd things with a 16th note pulse, like 13, 16 or something. Plans for JD is, to my ears, mostly there, but there's something about the chord changes. I don't know. It's like they push the angularity a bit too far to be interesting in a reharmonization kind of a way, but not far enough to sound out. Kind of a musical uncanny valley. See what I mean? Land's End. I like this one, despite the tempo and dynamics being something along the lines of arena fusion. Seems like it would be fabulous live though. Maybe that's why I glommed to it. The vocal bits are cool too. I don't know. After hearing the whole thing, it's not as bad as I feared it would be, but it's not as good as I hoped it would be. I think my overall impression is favorable though. I think. Mostly I'm just puzzled. Puzzled by some of the musical choices made. Honestly, I have no idea where I'm going to be after listening to Gradually Going Tornado for a week. I mean, it's alright. Honestly, I spent most of the week wondering why I wasn't more enthused about the music I was hearing. Because there are some great moments. Some decent tunes. And for an album from 1980, it sounds about six or seven years ahead of its time. My first hypothesis was the issue was Bill Bruford. Not his performance, but rather the expectation that's created when his name is on the cover. My thought was, since I was coming into Gradually Going Tornado with thoughts of albums like Fragile, Red, UK, then I was primed for something approaching perfection and would likely be disappointed with anything less. That was my first hypothesis. This is usually about the last record 
that you would dig up of his from the 70s. <laughs> it actually came out in 1980, but you know what I mean. It's like usually this is the one that you get after you get all the other ones and all the yes and all the crimson. And then eventually it's like, oh, well, there's one more. Let's check this out. Then I ran the experiment of pretend it's a level 42 album. Because one of the things I like to do for my musician friends that aren't as familiar with Level 42 is play for them the instrumental Heathrow from their self-titled album. It's a fabulous song. And it definitely shows that it wouldn't take all that much for Level 42 to be a serious fusion band. In fact, you know, I think that Mark King is one of the most underrated bassists out there. But the fact remains. As cool as that first Level 42 album is, I still don't spin it that often. It's interesting. As good as the songs and as good as the performances are, it doesn't hold my attention beyond the bounds of its playtime. I mean, I don't walk around on a daily basis and find Turn It On or Star Child stuck in my head very often. And that kind of describes what's happening here. Gradually Going Tornado has a couple of really great songs. It has some good performances. But it's ultimately only interesting to me as long as the music is playing. For whatever reason, my brain stops thinking about it as soon as the music stops. Also, I have a small suspicion that I just miss Alan Holdsworth. That could certainly be it as well. If you enjoyed the Bruford Band, I would suggest following up with Bill's other group, Earthworks, with acoustic piano and upright bass uh, and did some amazing stuff. So if you like Bruford, in the fusion context, definitely check out Earthworks as well. Mm -hmm.